Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James Ophir here with you. We are glad you're with us this uh, afternoon, and we hope that you're ready for a study from God's Word. We're going to be getting right into it. We're going to be talking about people today. That's right. We're going to be talking about them. Not, not gossip, but we are going to be talking about people. And, you know, sometimes when we hear the idea of talking about people, you, you might say, well, is that wrong? And some people say, well, it depends on how you mean it. You know, I mean, what, what about if we talk about what people believe or if we talk about what people teach? I mean, is that wrong? Is, is it wrong to say what they say? Is it wrong to repeat what they say? Is it wrong to say what they believe? If we're just repeating what, what they say or what they have said? Uh, you know, now, I know when we were growing up, we always heard, you know, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. And that makes me wonder, well, what is nice? What, what does it mean to be nice? I mean, who gets to determine what is nice? What's, what's saying something nice? And so we, uh, you know, we have to wonder what, about that. So that's what we're going to be getting to in a word from the Lord. We're going to uh, we're gonna get a word from the Lord on the matter so that we can all know what will be nice, and it will be nice to know what it what, what is nice. It'll be nice to know if we can talk about people and what we can say. It's so all that's coming up on A Word from the Lord. Friends, A Word from the Lord is brought to you by the Church of Christ. We meet at 250 Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina. And um, we meet at Sundays at, we meet Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship, Thursday nights at 7 p.m. for Bible study. And if you'd like to reach me, my name is James Oldfield, 276-340-2653, 276-340-2653, that is my cell phone number. You can call that number right now, we'll, and we'll talk uh, on the air. Uh, or you can reach me at wordfromthelord at gmail.com, a word from the Lord at gmail.com. We'll be glad to hear from you, study with you by that uh, by, by email, or we'll set up a Bible study. You can uh, We can meet somewhere and and study the Bible. I've, I've uh, had Bible studies with people in, in, uh, in McDonald's. You know, uh, they don't feel they want to meet somewhere neutral. Okay, uh, you can come to the uh, 250 the Boulevard. We can uh, set up there and have a Bible study there. I'll come to your home. It doesn't really matter. If you would like to have a Bible study, want to know more about uh, a word from the Lord, and get a word from the Lord, uh, this is what you'll get. And so I hope that you will take advantage of that and know that we'll, we'll answer your questions. We'll be glad to study with you. And we hope that you'll take advantage of the opportunities that we offer you to study and hope you'll tell your friends and your family about about a word from the Lord every uh, Sunday at 5 p.m. And so if you would like to be a part of this program, phone numbers are, two, are area code 336-337-9696, 427-9696, that's 427-WMYN, or 627-9563, 627-9563. 627-WLOE and call and be right on the program and we'll have a Bible uh, Bible discussion about talking about people. We can talk to each other about talking about people. So um, that's what we're going to be doing today um, right here on the Word of the Lord. So let's get into it. All right. What does it mean to be talking about someone? You know, I mean, if, if, if you're discussing their health, um, someone's been in the hospital. I was talking to... Um, uh, a brother this afternoon, and he was telling about you know friends uh, that that are in the hospital, not in good health, so forth. Is is that talking about them? Is that bad? We were talking about them, no doubt about it. We were talking about them, but is it bad? And someone says, "Well, you were talking about them, but I guess that's okay because you're discussing their health and their well-being, and you know, are, are they over getting over the flu, or you know, how's your cold, or uh, I heard you fell the other day. How are you doing, so forth? So th that's really not bad, I guess, but." What if they have done something bad? I mean, let's think about it. If we can't talk about people, then we really can't talk to people, can we? Because how many times do we talk to people and we we mention someone else? You know, we're talking about uh, we're talking to each other, but we talk about someone else. We someone else comes up in the conversation. Someone asks me about, well, how's my family? Well, I, I'd like to tell you, but I don't want to talk about anybody. No, you know that would be that would be silly. People say, "Well, you, you don't even want to tell us about how your how your family's doing," you know. So, but what if somebody has done something bad? 
or, or if what if they've done something allegedly done something bad? Uh, is that wrong? I mean, is it a sin to talk about someone who has uh, uh, supposedly done something wrong? I mean, listen, I, I listen to the crime report on TV. You, you know you do too. Y'all listen to the crime report. You listen to the the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, police blotter. You see who comes. You read about it in the paper. So and so was arrested for breaking and entry. So and so arrested for uh, drunk and disorderly. So and so was was charged for uh, spousal abuse. Someone was chosen for disrupting the, uh, the the public. Whatever. I mean, that's on the TV all the time. We listen to the news. All we we listen to it. You know, we, we watch it on our uh, on our computer screen. Let's see who was arrested. Let's see what's going on. Let's see where the crime is, the crime report, right? Now, is that good? Is that bad? Is it a sin? See, listen, it's not always good or nice. I mean, I don't necessarily like hearing that sort of thing, but I do like knowing it, and I, I think you do too. So here's the point. Uh... We're okay with talking about people who have been arrested. I mean, it's like I said, it's on the news. We watch the news every night, and they talk about someone, uh, you know, down here in Florida. This uh, guy goes in here and shoots up the, the the high school, and we're talking about him. We're talking about him. Uh, we're talking about the police officer. Talking about the security officer at the school in Florida that stayed outside for four minutes while the shooter was inside for six minutes. And how, you know, I mean, the police chief, his police chief comes out, calls him a coward. Boy, that wasn't really nice, was it? But yet everybody's calling him a coward. Everybody's talking about how bad he is. Now, is that, ba is that a bad thing? You see, friends, my, um, my point is, we can talk about people, we can talk about things they say and do, and it's not, it's not mean. It's not mean. It's just stating the facts. Now, what if we're talking about what people believe or teach religiously? Hmm. Hmm. Is that good or bad? See, we're we're okay with it, man. This guy, this guy went to the school and he shot up all these people. School massacre. We talk about people in the crime report. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd like to know that sort of thing. Well, did you know so and so? He is a member of such and such church, and this is what they believe. Oh, you can't talk about that, James. That's mean. Wait a minute. I just said this is what they believe. And as a matter of fact, they'll tell you they believe that. So why is that bad? See, for some reason, when we get to the religion aspect of our life, when we get to the, the part where, well, what do you believe religiously? All of a sudden now, the measuring stick changes. Right, it goes from it goes from being nice to naughty. You know, it goes from being it goes from good to bad. Talking about people and what they believe or what they say or what they teach, it goes from being okay to not okay. It goes from being right to wrong. I mean, it's, everything goes out the window. And I've I've said before, you know, there's two uh, two areas of life I believe where people just throw common sense out the window. That's when they're in love and when they're talking about the Bible. I mean, you talk to someone who's in love, and man, they all googly-eyed and gaga, and boy, they just, you know, no common sense whatsoever. And you talk to someone about the Bible, and all of a sudden, no reasoning ability whatsoever, no common sense whatsoever. Can't talk about it, can't talk about it. No one wants to, no one wants to hear what someone else believes. Well, is that wrong? See? Why is everything bad? If you say something about what people believe or teach or practice, I mean, why is that wrong? Now, you, you may have some disagreement with that. You may want to discuss that some more, but that's that's what we're talking about. We're talking about what people believe. Um, so give me a call, area code 336, the phone number, area code 336. The phone number is 427-9696, 427-WMYN, or 627-9563, 627-9563. 9563 WLOE. All right, so just to show you, just to show you that it's not bad to talk about people and it's not bad to talk about what they believe religiously and it's not bad really to to tell people what other people believe. I want you to consider uh a a man 
that he he did a whole lot of talking. I mean, when he, when you talk about people, what people believe and what they say and what they practice, what they believe and so forth, this man what he did a lot of talking. Now, I don't know if you think that's wrong, or if you think that's bad, or you think that I'm bad for talking about what someone else believes. But I want you to listen to what this man said. This man was asked a question about washing hands. And he says, why? And, and they were asked, why do your disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. And this man answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Now the man, of course, that's being asked this question and, and that gives the answer is Christ, Jesus. Jesus the Christ, and he says, why do you transgress the commandment of, your, of God by your tradition? He's talking about what they believe. He's talking about what they practiced. He's talking about what they taught. And he says, God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But I say, but ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Now look what he did. He said he condemned what they're taught, what they practiced, what they believed. He told them what God said on the matter. And then he showed that what they taught, believed, was actually wrong. He actually quoted to them what they said. He said, this is what God says, and this is what you say. You say, whosoever shall say to his father and mother, it's a gift. And whatsoever thou mightest be proud of by me, and don't honor your father and mother. He said, that's what you say. And he said, but when you do that, see, when you do that, you made the commandment of God in effect by your traditions. Now, friends, that's why it's good to talk about what people believe, because what you get to do if if everybody's being honest, what you get to do is you get to talk about what people believe, what they practice, what they teach, and what they say, and then you put it right beside the Bible. You get a word from the Lord, and you get a word from man, and you put it right together, and you get to know, you get to see clearly what God said versus what man has said, what the Bible says versus what man's tradition says. And then Christ went on to say in verse 7, this is Matthew 15, this is where I'm reading. Matthew 15, verse 7, he says, ye hypocrites. I mean, he actually did a little name calling there. Woo, watch out. Called them hypocrites. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, this people draw the nigh unto me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Man, Jesus, boy, he, he smacked him down, didn't he? Listen, Jesus, this was not even the harshest time Jesus talked about people. This wasn't even one of the harshest ways. Now someone says, well, you, James, you can't talk about people. Well, Jesus did. And listen, if you really want to, if you really want to get on down to it, uh, you come on down to Matthew 15, and his disciples said, no one's doubt that the Pharisees were offended after they heard these things. His disciples said, Jesus... Lord, you getting these people upset? And Jesus said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. Jesus didn't seem too awfully concerned about talking about what they believed, referring to what they taught, and telling them what they taught and showing that what they taught and what they believed and what they said was not lining up with the scripture. He said, look, if they can take it or they can leave it. Now, you say, well, James, that's pretty harsh. Well, if you think that's harsh, I don't know if you've read about Jesus or not, this man called Jesus. Uh, but if you've ever read the Bible, and most people who say they know Jesus haven't really read the Bible or or paid attention to what kind of man Jesus was. But in Matthew 23, in Matthew 23, Jesus, he doesn't pull any punches. I mean, he, he lets them have it with both barrels. 
and then reloads. In Matthew 23, listen to what Jesus says. Jesus spake to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move with one of their fingers. He said, they tell people what to do, and they don't even do it. They don't even do it with their one finger. He said, they put these big burdens on people and want them to, to carry this load. He said, but they don't even lift it with their finger. They would let you carry the weight, and then them, they themselves won't even pick it up. He said, but all their works they do for it to be seen of men. Man, he's talking about them, folks. He is talking about them. He is telling the, the disciples and the multitudes just how bad the scribes and Pharisees were. He says, this is what they do. They, they may broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And he said, they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. He said, they, they love to be seen of men. The greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. He said, that's what they like. He said, that's what they love. And so Jesus said, well, he's talking about them. Now, what if I said, you know, all these guys that run around and they call themselves right reverend. They call themselves chief apostle. They call themselves elder bishop, reverend, number seven. And they give themselves all these titles. Now, if I said that about people today, is that good or bad? Is that talking about people? Well, it's talking about them all right. But it's not talking about them wrong or incorrectly. It's actually saying what they say about themselves. And it's showing that Jesus did the same I'm showing that Jesus did the same thing. And condemned them for it. Because what they do, they love the uppermost room at feast. They love to be seen of men. They love to be praised of men. And friends, that's what it's all about. You go to the hospital. You just walk through the hospital parking lot. And see if you don't see cars that have clergy on them. You know why they do that? They want to, they want to park up there at the front. They don't want to walk very far. And some of these so-called pastor, bishop, rabbis, man, they need to walk a little bit. They, they need to park the back. You know, they drive their big Lincolns and their Cadillacs and everything else. And, you know, they're just, they're just making... Making it fat, making fat on uh, on the backs of all their flock. And what do they do? Well, they want to be seen. They want the chief seats. They want the chief parking lot. And so they got clergy on the back of their car because they want a special parking permit. When I go visit the hospital, I'm a preacher. I go visit the hospital, I'm not parking there. That's not my parking spot. Leave that for the for the uh, uh, the elderly and the handicapped and the, and the pregnant women, I actually saw. I've got a picture of a of a, a church building up in uh, Henry County, Virginia, and the preacher's parking lot is right up at the front. And there's a special parking spot. I just I wish I had the picture up to describe it for you. But there was a there the, the parking. There's a special marked parking spot. For expectant mothers, and it's out by the road. <laughs> I just thought, man, you got to be kidding me! Really? That that's 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 the chief seats. But when Jesus talked about these scribes and Pharisees, look what he says. He said they want to be seen of men. And then look what he says in verse thirteen. I'm in Matthew twenty three and verse thirteen. He says, "But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites!" Look what he's calling them. Jesus, you're talking about these folks. You're talking bad about them. You shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye that suffer ye them that are entering to go in. 
Well, I guarantee you folks, if you ask your preacher, bishop, rabbi a question about what we're teaching, what they will tell you is don't listen or don't worry about it. They'll dismiss it. If you were to ask them to sit down with me, you know what they'll say? They won't do it. They won't do it. You know why? Because they can't answer. And they know that if they put themselves in that situation, what will happen is they will they will hear what they teach and what they believe and what they practice, and then they'll hear the Bible, and they won't like the comparison. This is what Jesus is doing. Matthew 23, verse 14, he calls them hypocrites again. He said he divided with his houses. In verse 15, he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He calls them hypocrites again. Then look at verse 16. I'm still in Matthew 23. Woe unto you, ye blind guides. Blind guides. He's already, he's already said back in Matthew 15, they're blind leaders of the blind. In verse 17, he says, ye, bl ye fools and blind. Again, he calls them fools. He calls them blind. Matthew 19, he, Matthew 23, 19. Ye fools and blind. He says, whether it's, it's greater the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift. In other words, they're saying, well, if you swear by the altar, it doesn't mean anything. But if you swear by the gift that's on the altar, you're guilty. Jesus says, what's the difference? What's greater, the altar or the gift that's on the altar? And so I'm just saying, friends, Jesus, Jesus wore them out. Matthew 23, 23, still in Matthew 23. Just read Matthew 23 sometime. Jesus said, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You pay tithe of men and anise and cumin, but you've omitted the weightier matters of the law, like judgment, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done and not leave the other undone. You blind guides. You strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. You scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You know, you wash the you wash the outside, but you're like you're like these cups and, and plates and saucers. You wash the outside, but full or full of extortion and excess. That's what you're like. You're like a dirty dish. Can you imagine, you know, you go to the dishwasher and get dish out of the cupboard? Boy, it looks nice and pretty, and then on the inside, you pick it up, it's like, man, nobody's washed this thing. Nobody's cleaned this. It's still got chili inside of it, or it's still got, you know, spaghetti sauce stuck to it, or whatever. It's not clean. Well, he said, you, you hypocrite, that's what y'all doing. He said, what you need to do is clean the inside, and then, the, and then worry about the outside. He's talking about the inside of their heart. He said, it's just like, like a dirty dish. Matthew 23, 27, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You're like whited sepulchers. You're like a whited gravestone. You are, are not a gravestone, but a, uh, a tomb, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and full of uncleanness. Now, now friends, outwardly appear righteous, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And you say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we wouldn't have done what they did. We would have been partakers of the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye are witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers. He said, you do exactly, you would do exactly what they did. Now, friends, I'm, here's my point. That's just Jesus talking. That's just that's just two chapters in the Bible of Jesus talking about teachers and what they believe. So my point is, is that mean? Jesus, he, he, he talked to them. He talked about them. He said what they believed. He showed where it contradicted the Bible. Is that mean? Is that, is that wrong? Is that bad to do all that? No. I don't think anybody's going to condemn Jesus. But you know what? Jesus is not the only one that did that. Paul didn't know that it was mean to do that sort of thing. Paul didn't know it was mean. In, in Acts chapter 13, I want you to consider this. In Acts chapter 13, the apostle Paul 
Saul. He's he, he's they still call him Saul at this point. But in in Acts chapter thirteen, uh, Saul or Paul and Barnabas are sent away. They sent out on on the mission. And the Bible says in verse uh, five, Act, Acts thirteen verse five, and when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God to the synagogue in the synagogue of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. Now, let me stop here for a minute. Luke is doing the writing here. Luke, I just I can't believe you're going to call this man a false prophet. That is so, so mean. That is so cruel. I can't believe you'd call him a false prophet, Luke. Well, he is a false prophet. Which, uh, his name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimaeus the sorcerer, for so was his name by interpretation, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, now listen to what Saul, Paul, the Apostle Paul says to this man, this false prophet. He said, O oh, fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. Woo. Watch out, Paul. Boy, you talking mean. You're not being very nice. He says, Thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Boy, Paul, man, you just you you just jumped right on this fellow with both feet. That's right. You know why? Because he was trying to keep people from hearing the truth. And 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 false teachers don't get, you know, they don't get the 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 benefit of the doubt. You know, they, they don't they don't get much of a break. Let me just say it that way. They don't get much of a break. Because they're in the position of teaching people. And this is what then this is what Paul goes on to say. He's not through. Acts thirteen verse eleven, he says, And now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Man, Paul, you, you got hard on this guy. That's right. Now, was that mean? No, friends, because he was perverting the way of righteousness. Now, friends, is it wrong to talk about what people believe and what they teach? What they what they themselves say is that wrong? No, I know it's not. And as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if you want to uh, look at an, another example here, in Acts twenty three, here's Paul again. Acts twenty three verse one, Paul earnestly beholding the council said, "Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day, and the high priest and Ananias." commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. For sittest thou to judge me after the law and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? Now listen to what Paul says. Is Paul saying, how dare you judge me, Ananias? No. Paul did not have a problem being judged. But this is what he was telling Ananias. He said, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. So he, he's, kind of, he's kind of being kind of mean, isn't he? Kind of talking about him, calling him names like that? No. He's not being mean. He's showing exactly what the man is. Just like Jesus described them. White and clean and pretty on the outside. White as sepulcher, but inside full of excess and riot and unrighteousness. 
What Paul then condemned him for is this. He says, look, he said, you're sitting to judge me after the law, and that's fine. He said, but you command me to be smitten contrary to the law. That is why the man was a hypocrite, not because he was judging Paul according to the law. That's fine. But he said, you're commanding me to be smitten, to be struck, which the law forbids. So you're not a righteous judge. You're actually breaking the law yourself. You had me hit because supposedly I broke the law, but you broke the law in doing that. See how that works? It's not wrong to judge. It's not wrong to condemn. It's not wrong to tell people what they're doing wrong as long as you're not doing the same thing. And we could go on. I mean, 1 Timothy uh, 1 and verse 18. Here, here's another example. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18. Paul said, uh, he tells Timothy, hold, fast, uh, hold, hold the faith with a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning the faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander whom I have delivered unto Satan that they, may not, that they may learn not to blaspheme. He calls them by name. He calls them by name. Now, friends, is that, was that nice? Was that mean? Was that bad? No, friends. It wasn't mean. It was a good thing. It was a good thing. Now, I'm just saying, friends, can we do that today? Maybe you want, maybe you want to weigh in on this matter. Go ahead, call in. You can call me at 276-340-2653, or you can call on the the, uh, the live line, area code 336-427-9696, 427-WMYN, or 627-9563, 627-WLOE. All right, so Paul didn't know that. Peter didn't know that. Friends, we could go on and on. Listen to this. Listen, in Acts chapter 4, in Acts chapter 4 and verse... Four, Peter and the apostles, they're being called into question about what they're preaching. About what they're preaching. And many of the people believing on what they preach, what they're saying. In Acts chapter 4, verse 5, now listen to this. And it came to pass on the morrow, the next day, that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the, the, uh, Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, that is, they set the apostles in the midst of them, they asked, By what power or what name have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if, the, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand before you, stand here before you whole. You see what Peter did? He said, now, now Peter, you could have just, you could have left out that whom you crucified. You didn't have to remind them that they crucified Jesus. You could have just said, well, he was, he was made whole by Jesus. He was made whole by Jesus of Nazareth. But instead, he reminds them, yeah, he was made whole by Jesus, whom ye crucified, by the way. Remember that? Y'all put him to death. Y'all made sure that he was put to death. You are the ones that are in charge. See that? Why, why does Peter do that? Peter, you, you're not going to make many friends that way, Peter. He's reminding them of what they did wrong. Now, friends, is that wrong? Is it bad to tell them, remind people what they did, what they believe, what they practice, what they say? Is it wrong? And and if you go to Peter's letter, 2 Peter chapter 2, he says, there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Now, Peter, why do you got to call them false teachers? How do you know they're false teachers? It must be because what they're teaching and what they're saying is contrary to the Bible. He says, there are false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. 
Many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetous shall they with feigned words, fake words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Peter, Peter said people are false teachers and actually said that what they taught was damnable. It's damning. It's damnable heresies. That's, that's pretty bold, Peter. That's pretty strong. My friends, can we do that? Can we talk about what people believe, what they teach, what they practice, what they believe? I say we can. Jesus did it. Paul did it. Peter did it. Why can't we do it? I mean, we could go on and on and on. Stephen didn't know that it was wrong to do that. He called, in Acts 7, he called those folks he was preaching, he said, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised the heart and ears. Boy, Stephen, that's a good way to get stoned. Well, that's exactly what he did. Exactly what happened to him. But it must have been okay because he was speaking by the Holy Spirit. He was inspired as was Jesus, as was Paul, and as was Peter. Now, here's my point. If inspired men can talk about what people believe, can expose what people believe, can remind those people about what they believe and what they teach and what they practice, and tell other people about what they teach and what they believe and what they practice, then surely we can do. Surely we can do. Now, so if these men condemn these teachings and these actions, these false teachers, shouldn't we be able to do the same? I would say it would be nice to do the thing, to do the same thing, wouldn't it? I mean, it's, it's a pretty good example. And so, uh, people who are leading others astray, they, they can be pointed out, and they can be told this is what they teach, this is what they practice, this is what they believe, and this is why it's. It's contrary to the Bible. Now you say, "Well, James, okay, you 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 you've given a lot of a lot of uh, uh, principles. What's some application?" Well, friends, this is where this is where the plow gets pretty close, right? All of a sudden, people people say, "Oh, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you." Well, let's just see how long you stay with me. Have you been noticing all these flags? Post office and around town, flying half staff, drop down halfway. Why is that? Well, the the flag code, I guess you might say, says that the reason why flags fly at half staff is because it says, by the order of the president, the flag shall be flown at half staff upon the death of principal figures of the United States government and the governor of a state, territory, or possession as a mark of respect to their memory. All the flags are flying half-staff because a fellow that lived right down the road from us here named Billy Graham died. Billy Graham was one of the most, if not the most, infamous false teachers of our time. Oh, James, that is so mean. That's so disrespectful. Listen, friends, it's not like we're not saying something about a man that's passed on that we hadn't said before about a man that was living. Listen, we talked about Billy Graham and some of the things that he he has, he has taught in his lifetime uh, back around his birthday, back in November. And there's plenty more proof that we can talk about I mean, we're, we can do just like Jesus, just like Peter, just like Paul, and we can talk about what people believe, practice, and taught, and show that, you know what, it is so contrary to the Bible. I want you to listen to this, friends. Just I, you, you, probably, you may be getting mad, but listen. Just listen to the facts. You know, let's... Don't be like we like we said at the very beginning. You know, don't throw common sense out the window just because we're talking about religion, just because we're talking about the Bible. Let's let's stay with me here. 
This is what Billy Graham said about Pope John Paul II. Pope John Paul II, upon his death, this is what Billy Graham said about Pope John Paul II. He said, I think he's with the Lord because he believed. He believed in the cross. That was his focus throughout his ministry, the cross. No matter if you were talking to him from personal issue or an ethical problem, he felt that there was the answer of all of our problems, the cross and the resurrection. He was a strong believer. Now, now friends, that sounds good and pretty and smooth, right? But that's what false teachers do. That's what they do. They, they, they make it flowery and smooth and pretty. But listen, he said he believed the Pope was with the Lord because he believed. Friends, Catholics believe Jesus is the Pope. Or the Pope is Jesus, excuse me. Catholics believe that the Pope is Jesus. Now, it, what does that say about Billy Graham? Oh, I think he's with the Lord. He believed. He was a strong believer. Yeah, he, was, he believed it so strongly, he believed that he was Jesus. And I'm just saying, friends, most people in Christianity, so-called Christianity, quote-unquote Christianity, know that Catholicism is not Christianity. I mean, that's the very reason why there's Catholics and Protestants. Protestants are anybody that's not a Catholic. Because where they started was they were protesting the Catholic Church. And yet Billy Graham comes along and says, I believe, the, I believe Pope John Paul is with the Lord. He was a strong believer. He believed in the cross. Well, so what if he believed in the cross? Does that make him right? He believes that he's the Pope. And, and during his crusades, listen, during his crusades, Billy Graham would send, quote, quote, unquote, converts that answer to the altar call, he would send them to the Roman Catholic churches. If they were if they were Catholic, he would send them to the Roman Catholic church. He didn't try to convert them. He didn't try to convert them. In 1957, according to the San Francisco News, Billy Graham stated, quote, anyone who makes a decision at our meetings is seen later and referred to a local clergyman. Protestant, Catholic, or Jewish. Now, now, friends, really? I mean, if if you're not going to make a distinction between Catholic, Jewish, and Protestant, then I mean, I mean, what are you what are you preaching for? You see, you see what, you see what I'm talking about here? And I'm telling you what Billy Graham said, taught, believed. And everybody is, you know, mourning the loss of Billy Graham. And Billy Graham's done enough damage. Billy Graham has done enough damage of leading people astray, you know, for one lifetime. 99 years is plenty of time. In 1983, 600 people were turned over to the Catholic religion as a result of the Orlando Crusade. 600 people. Now, you think 600 people in the Catholic Church, you think they're saved? They're in a church where the Pope is their daddy. That's what Pope means, Papa. And they believe that he is Christ on earth. Most, I, just, I, just can't, I can't get wrap my, around, my, around, my, I can't wrap my mind around that. In 1967, Billy Graham received an honorary doctorate from Belmont Abbey, a Jesuit Catholic school. He's a friend of the Catholics. He's a friend of the Catholics. It didn't bother it didn't bother him to talk about Catholicism and say they're my brother. As a matter of fact, that's what he said about Pope John Paul II. He said he's my brother. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of King Ahab uh, in in First Kings chapter twenty. First Kings chapter twenty and verse uh, about verse thirty two. The the context is Ahab is the king of Israel. And he's supposed to be fighting the Syrians. And the Syrian king is Ben-Hadad. And the Bible says that Ben-Hadad fled and came into uh, the city of Aphek. 
and hid in an inner chamber. And his servant said unto him, Behold, now we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on your loins and ropes upon your heads, and go out to the king of Israel, peradventure he will save thy life. See, because the kings of Israel, they never, none of them ever did what God said. They were merciful. They were more merciful than what God said. They were more merciful than God. And so their servants are saying to Ben, hey, Dad, you need to go out and, you know, talk to Ahab. And so they girded sackcloth on their loins and put ropes on their heads and came to the king of Israel and said, Thy servant Ben-Hadad saith, I pray thee, let me live. And Ahab said, Is he yet alive? He is my brother. Now the men did diligently observe whether anything would come from him and did hastily catch it. And they said, Thy brother Ben-Hadad. Then he said, Go. Go ye bring him. Then Ben-Hadad came forth, and he caused him to come into the chariot. You see what's happening? Ben-Hadad was the enemy king, the Syrian king. And Ahab was the king of Israel, yet he said, he's my brother. And they caught right on to it. Oh, <laughs> boy, we all in this together. We buddy, buddy. He's my brother. Oh yeah, your brother Ben Hadad. Hey, Friends, that's why I, I'm I'm not brethren with people in the denominational world. They're not my brother. I, I would love for them to be my brethren, but they're not. They teach a different doctrine. They follow a different uh, uh, faith, if you will. There's only one faith, Ephesians four and verse five. So how can they be my brethren if they're in a different faith? We can be friends. We can be cordial. We can be kind and courteous. But we're not brethren. We're not brethren, not until we all obey, obey the same doctrine. But this, And this is what I'm saying. This is where Billy Graham was. Billy Graham was making nice with all the denominations. That's why he was so well known throughout all the world. You know, Jesus said, uh, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. In Luke 6 and verse... Uh, Luke 6, 26, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Now, friends, I, this is where Billy Graham was. You know, Billy Graham said in, uh, in his crusades, he did not try to convert Muslims, Jews, Muslims or Jews. He just didn't try to convert them. He wasn't concerned about converting it. Well, friend, how can you really believe the gospel is the power of God to save, Romans 116, and not convert people who don't even profess to be quote-unquote Christians? I mean, if you can even wrap your mind around, all right, we're going to take the Catholics in as our brethren, our so-called Christian brethren, I mean, how do, you, how do you then justify going, well, I'm not even going to try to convert Jews or, or Muslims? I don't, I don't get that. And then people go, oh, he's, he's a great evangelist. Billy Graham was a great evangelist. What was he evangelizing? He wasn't, he wasn't spreading the good news. He was spreading news that made people feel good, but it wasn't the good news. And I know, and I know you've heard this before. This uh, interview with Robert Shuler. Robert Shuler asked Billy Graham a question about Christianity. Robert Shooter says, tell me, what do you think is the future of Christianity? And listen to what Billy Graham says. Billy Graham is going to give an answer that ought to just make you swallow your false teeth. I mean, it ought to make you swallow, uh, swallow your teeth if you believe that Billy Graham is remotely, remotely a Christian evangelist. Listen to what he says. Again, the question. Tell me, what is the future of Christianity? Here's Billy Graham's answer. I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious of it or not, they're members of the body of Christ. And that's what God is doing today. He's calling people for, out of the, the world for his name, 
whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world, uh, they are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but uh, they know in their heart that they need something that they don't have, and they turn to the only light that they have, and I think that they are saved, and they're going to be with us in heaven. This is fantastic. I'm so thrilled to hear you say that. There is a wideness in God's mercy. There is. I think everybody that, that loves Christ or knows Christ, whether they're conscious, I think everybody now, that loves Christ. Do you hear what he said? He said whether they're Muslims or Jews or even if they don't believe. My friends, really? And, and people want to still defend Billy Graham? He, he's saying that you don't even know Christ. People that don't even know Christ, they go to the only life they have. Well, friends, I don't know about you. It just so happens I read my Bible. And I know what the Bible says about Jesus. In John 1, the book of John, chapter 1, it says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came in for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Friends, Jesus is the light. Now, Muslims don't have a light. The Jewish people don't have a light. See? Because they're not following Christ. Now how is it that how is it that people are going to come to God by the only light that they know, even if they've never heard the name of Christ? How is that even possible? The Bible says you cannot you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven if you don't confess the name of Christ. Now please tell me how in the world you're going to confess the name of Christ if you've never heard of Christ? How is it you're going to, you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven? If you don't repent of your sins, I mean, why would you even why would you repent if you don't know that what you're believing, what you're practicing, what you're teaching is wrong? And why would you change? Why why would you change if the preacher that you heard preaching, Billy Graham, if you heard him say, "Well, just come to God according to the best light you know." I change it all. See, how does that produce faith? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. And friends, that's why we're saying, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't hear the word of God, how can you even believe it? How could anyone believe that the Catholics are going to be saved? How can anyone believe that any denomination in the world is going to be saved if they can't find it in the word of God? How do you have that faith? And, and, I'm, and so, my, my point is, people say, well, well, James, you shouldn't be talking about Billy Graham. He just died. Well, maybe we should have talked more about Billy Graham while he was alive. But his, he, he's going his, he's gonna to live on. I mean, his words are still going to live on, unfortunately. And, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, we're, we're, everybody's praising Billy Graham who taught, practiced, and believed things that were contrary to the Bible. He called the Catholic, he called the Pope his brother, a man who believes that he is Christ. Now, friends, if anybody else said that, they'd be run out of town, tarred and feathered, right? David Koresh said that, and the government broke in and tore down the, the compound down in Waco. Right? Jim Jones said, thought that he was Christ, and Drink the Kool-Aid and look how bad of a mark he has on history. Who else has said that they're that they're uh, that they are Jesus? Uh, Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam, Master Wallace Farrard of the Nation of Islam said that he's Jesus. All these people say they're Jesus, and they go, well, "He's a nut." We know he ain't Jesus. But the Pope comes along, he, oh, he's Jesus, oh, he's my brother, please. If the Pope's your brother and he calls himself Jesus, I don't know why these other people aren't your brother. 
I mean, why isn't everybody that calls themselves Jesus, why aren't they your brother? And friends, I'm not trying to make people upset and get them riled up or what have you. But I am trying to get you to think and reason with me. I mean, why is it, why is it that we can't just simply talk about what people believe, what they practice, what they teach, and just line it up with the Scripture? And again, if someone wants to say, well, James, I'm going to, I'm going to take what you say and line it up with the Bible. Please do. That's, that's what I want you to do. I mean, that's like, that's like briar rabbit saying, don't throw me in the briar patch, right? That's exactly where I want you to go. I want you, I want you to hold up what we're teaching, put it right to the Bible. I want you to take what is being said, put it right up to the Bible. Let's, let's practice it. You know, let's, let's, let's hold it up to the standard that I'm willing to hold everybody else up to. Friends, we've got just a few minutes left. If you want to call in, you might want to make a comment. Maybe you don't. Maybe, maybe you're mad anyway. Turn, turn, uh, turn me off. That's fine, too. But, friends, I, I want you to know that, that I love you. I care about you. I wouldn't be saying all this just to, just to rile you up. But see, if Jesus did it, and Paul did it, and Peter did it, Stephen did it, how many other people in the New Testament did it? Told people, told people what they believed, talked about what people believed, talked about what people practiced, and then held it up to the Bible. Held it up to the, the Word of God and said, well, this is contrary. If it's, if it's contrary to the Bible, friends, it, it, it can't be true. It just cannot be true. 336-427-9696. 627-9563-276-340-2653. Got just a few minutes left. Friends, I want you to know that I love you and I care about you. And if you want to study this more, you say, well, James, you know what? I, I don't know if I want you to study with me because you're kind of harsh. Well, how about you give me a chance, you know? I'm not I'm not the same in all settings. Someone says, well, I hear, I hear all y'all all say... All you say when I hear you on on the, on the air is is uh, kind of hard. Well, why don't you come to another setting? Why don't you come to Bible study on Sunday morning? It's different. It's still Bible teaching right from the Bible, but it's different. You know, that's like if you if if you get tired of eating if you get tired of eating uh, spaghetti every night for supper. Well, show up for breakfast. You know, if you're tired of eating uh, steak and eggs or steak and steak and a baked potato for supper, well, come to breakfast. Eat some biscuits and gravy. You know, we have something a little different. Friends, I want you to know that uh, you're more than welcome to come and visit with us. We'd love to see you. Uh, 250 Boulevard is where we meet Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship, Thursday night 7 p.m. for uh, Bible study as well. Of course, Sundays at 5 p.m. You can right here on uh, on on the radio, and you can uh, give me a call at 276-340-2653 or wordmanlord at gmail dot com. Wordmanlord at gmail dot com, and we'll be glad to hear from you, friends. This is the uh, this is the home of the thousand dollar reward, and if you want to know more about that, you can give me a call. So what's that all about? I'll be glad to tell you. I'll be glad to tell you. We hope that you will. Come out and visit with us. Uh, let us know. Let me hear from you. You can send me a text, phone call, email, carry a pigeon, whatever. Just let me know that you're listening, that you're that you're watching, uh, and uh, we'll be glad to assist you in any way we can. I'm about out of time, so I think maybe I got what thirty seconds, one minute, one minute. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, friends, again, two fifty the Boulevard is where we meet, and uh, I want you to come out and visit with us. Remember to uh, test what we're saying. You know, compare it to the Bible. Take notes. If you want a copy of this program, maybe you want a copy of of uh, the the notes that I'm using, whatever. I'll I'll try to do my best to get you a copy of those, or uh, maybe a copy of the program where you can listen to it again. Or again, like I said, I'll be glad to come out and study the Bible with you. Any time that you're willing to do that, I'm willing to do that as well. So please let us know how we can assist you in any way. 
250 Boulevard is where we meet. A word from the Lord at gmail.com, 276 people.